Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine, and this week we're hearing about Spanish mackerel moving into Rhode Island and well established in Connecticut. We are hearing that false albacore are going crazy in Upper Buzzards Bay and still in Vineyard Sound. We are hearing that the canal had a great week for stripers and it's only going to get better as the tides get better this week. And everybody is reporting just massive schools of peanut bunker everywhere. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's Web Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. So let's cut right to the chase. Everybody's here for the hardtails. I know that. And uh, so we're going to start with the hardtail report. We Things got shaken up last week, right around the time this report came out. Um, and we got those remnants of Ida. And that was a that ended up being a very intense storm. Way more intense than I expected. In fact, I had to stay up all night. Uh, I was afraid we were going to lose power and the sump pump would stop working. I don't think I've ever seen rain like that. But anyway... It really shook up the uh, the ocean world out there. And so we had Albies showing up in Western Buzzards Bay. We had them showing up in Newport and Point Judith, just dribs and drabs, you know, smaller schools. They were starting to establish themselves. There was a lot of bait. Ida came and they've been pretty hard to find ever since. Um, I have heard of a few guys getting a few here and there in that part of Rhode Island and Massachusetts, but it's, you know, very small schools, very widespread. Um, some of the you know most popular shore locations like Sakana Point, it's not even worth the drive. They're not there. Um, you're hearing about one one day, then zero for three days, and then one. You know, so it's it's a lot of bait, but there's not a lot of albies in that area. However, there are two areas where albies are well established and feeding well. Uh, one of them is in Rhode Island, and that would be pretty much from like Charlestown Breachway to Watch Hill, and then kind of bleeding over to Fishers Island. Maybe a little bit kind of coming around the corner into Long Island Sound as well. A lot of the albies over there are on large bait. They're on big peanuts and they're on half beaks. And more than a few guys that I've talked to have reported getting them on topwater plugs like the jumping minnow. Very exciting bite. And uh, when you get on them when they're feeding, it can be a real high octane event. You know, catching a lot of fish in a short period of time. Uh, wild feeds and amazing strikes on the surface. Uh, so that's one place that you can concentrate on. The place where there seems to be even more albies is Upper Buzzards Bay and then kind of coming through Woods Hole and heading east from there out toward Wacoit, Wacoit um, in Vineyard Sound. And the numbers there are very good. It's been much more of a boater's game. Not that that's any kind of a big surprise, but like I talked to Greg McSherry and he's got albie fever bad. And he said he stood on the end of a jetty for four and a half hours watching Albies feed. They never came in. Um, and, you know, that's the shore game if you're an Albie guy. But those are the places where uh, the Albies are established. That's where you have the best chance of catching them. That's where they're feeding the most. And now we've got to see if they'll kind of converge and fill in the rest of the region. I really hope they do. Um, but we won't know, you know, until the next week or the week after that. So... Uh, for all you Albi chasers out there that aren't fishing in those zones, you just got to stay diligent or you got to hop in the car and make it happen. And we'll stay on the tuna subject now. We're going to talk a little bit about bluefins. Uh, as you probably know, if you're a bluefin guy, the uh, giant fishery has opened back up as of September 1st. And it's the bite has been good for the guys that have been going. Um, but we have had a lot of the same problems, a lot of this weather that's made it really hard for most of the guys to get out there, or, or at least to stomach it. Um, but there are big fish being caught. I got a uh, picture today from my buddy Rob. I think he said it was 113 inch. That's a big fish. Um, and that was taken, I think, Stellwagen, but could have been east of the Cape. And, um, and then there's also another giant fishery popping up off of Rhode Island. I don't know a lot of details on this. It's been kind of presented to me as some kind of big secret, but I've heard it from a lot of different guys, so I don't think it's as much of a secret. But um, basically the details are, there's some really big fish out there, and um, and they're well within sight of land. You know, much closer to shore than what you'd normally expect. So now moving over into Massachusetts, really the main game in Massachusetts right now is striped bass. 
And if you've been following this report, you know that the North Shore has been seeing some fall-like, uh, fall run action, I should say, for stripers over the last couple weeks. And I talked to Jim Jukes and he said that kind of came to a screeching halt this week. There's still a lot of bait in place, but they're just not seeing that ferocious feeding like they were um, the last two weeks. And he was kind of scratching his head on that, you know, coming up on the new moon like this and, uh, you know, things kind of petered out. He did say that the mouth of Merrimack has been good. There's been a good number of slot fish there, but the beaches and the, and the rocky points just haven't had the fish. If you put in the time, uh, you are going to get rewarded here and there. He sent me a picture of his buddy here with a nice fish um, that came after a couple nights of working hard for him. And um, this is just one of the, of the handful that he found that night, but... You know, they're there for the guys putting in the time. Uh, but that, that fall run, like, pinch me, amazing fishing has ended for now. Um, when you head down into Gloucester, they are seeing big, they're seeing big bluefish. Um, and in and, and a smaller or a minority of bass. Uh, but there's still a lot of big bluefish in that area. The next place I'm hearing about good bass fishing is in Boston Harbor. Uh, that's kind of flared up over the last few days. And there's been some really nice fish. It's been mostly at night, uh, fish from 30 pounds and up. And uh, most of them are being caught on live eels, kind of drifting in between all those little islands and passageways out there. Uh, but three-wade bucktails will catch fish. Uh, trolling the tube and worm will catch fish. Um, but it's been good. It's been a pretty good bite there. As you head down toward the canal, we kind of head back into bluefish zone again. Outside the canal is just loaded with bluefish. They're outside the east end. There are just acres and acres of, of bluefish. Um, again, talking to Greg about this uh, from Red Top, and he was saying, you know, we got really good canal tides coming up in the next few days, and that may be enough to draw these bluefish in. It could be a, you know, an absolute Donnybrook in there uh, with bass, bluefish, and all this bait, you know, from mackerel and peanut bunker to the herring coming out of the runs with all the rain. And, uh, you know, the mackerel in there eating the herring fry and the bass and the bluefish eating the, and the eating the mackerel, it, it could be it could be great. It'd be a good week to check out the canal for sure. Um, on Cape Proper, the place where the most bass fishing is taking place seems to be Nosset Inlet. Um, I have heard of some fish at Race Point. I've heard of some fish on the backside, but um, most of the action seems to be centered around Nosset Inlet. A lot of slot stripers there. A um, couple fish over and some schoolies in there as well. It's been a boat and shore thing. And um, yeah, the fishing's been very good there. And then the, the next place I'm hearing about bluefish is, is in Vineyard Sound. They're kind of uh, disguising themselves as albies out there. So, you know, you're rolling up on some of these blitzes and if you're not paying close attention, you're throwing your epoxy jig in there and you're coming back with, uh, with just the end of your leader. Um, so there are some bluefish in that area, so be aware of that. But, um, you know, most of the guys fishing that area are chasing albies. And uh, the same would hold true for the vineyard. I didn't hear about any great catches of bass on the vineyard this week. Um, but that's, uh, that, that North Shore always seems to hold some fish at this time of the year. So if you're out on the vineyard, you're looking for a striper, that's where I'd be looking. And I did hear some bottom fishing news this week in Massachusetts. And it came from a place that I wouldn't necessarily expect to see it. Um, so I got an email from Alex Wick and his uh, wife Rachel and they were fishing up around Quincy looking for sea bass and they stumbled upon this 24 inch fluke. Really nice fish, nice photo. And they said that they did pretty well on the sea bass and there was a lot of, um, there were a lot of peanut bunker around and they thought maybe they'd run into some stripers, which they did not. Um, but they were surprised to see a fluke of that magnitude there and um, happy to catch some nice sea bass. And uh, heading through the canal, I, I haven't heard a lot of fluke news. You know, I, I would have to expect that there's still some up around the old canal channel and, um, and out around the islands. Sea bass wise, the place that I've been hearing the most uh, news is just coming from that hole south of Woods Hole. You know, you go, you're just heading through Woods Hole, heading toward the vineyard going out about a half mile or so, and then just jigging on some of that structure out there. Guys are getting some, getting some sea bass there. And uh, I know Jason Colby made a trip out to Cox's this week, did well on codfish and sea bass. I think that might be his last trip out there of the year, but you might want to check his website uh, just to be sure of that. Um, but I know the fishing's been, been good for all bottom species there as well.
And as we move over into Rhode Island, um, striper fishing has picked up, uh, especially for the surf guys, which is something I haven't been able to say in a while. Um, so on Saturday, I was out with my family on a Rhode Island beach, and I saw my first school of mullet of 2021. Whenever I see mullet, I automatically get excited for the surf fishing. Um, I've seen it too many years now where as soon as you see mullet, that switch just gets flipped. We get a lot more bass of all sizes inshore, day and night. Um, and I started to see evidence of it right away. You know, a couple of my friends uh, did well on uh, like Chris Lawton and his fishing partner. He sent, I got some photos here of him with some nice bass taken on uh, bottle darters and soft plastics. And, you know, that's probably a mullet fueled bite there. Um, I did some fishing myself last night in the big surf and uh, found similar results. I was throwing needlefish. I was tossing the needlefish in between the two, you know, big waves and trying to keep it at the speed of the waves, like way down in that trough. Fish were hitting gentle, but they were in there and, uh, you know, got on a good bite, good bite of fish up to 20 pounds. Um, and that's kind of what I expect to see when I start seeing mullet coming around and they're going to start showing up in bigger and bigger numbers now, especially as we get some more cool nights coming up. Uh, so you can expect that the, the surf bite throughout Rhode Island, because we get mullet from Narragansett Bay, we get them from the Narrow River, we get them from all the breachways. Uh, so we get a lot of uh, injections of mullets coming out, um, you know, as we get those cooler nights. So that bite really fires up here and uh, it can be a great thing to concentrate on if you're a surf guy. Uh, boat guys have told me that they're seeing a lot of daytime action. A lot of stripers on the surface, crushing those peanut schools, probably eating some mullet. There's a lot of snapper bluefish around, which is sort of an unsung hero of the uh, of the fall. You know, they, they are a sizable bait. The snappers that I'm seeing around right now are in that like six to seven inch range. And I mean, that's a snack for any striper over like 30 inches. They take that thing down, no problem. Um, and you will see those snappers schooling up in big schools. They can draw in, they can draw a lot of attention from, from nice bass. I talked to Charlie Soares. He said that he was coming through uh, after looking for Albies with a with a friend of his, and they came onto a big school of uh, of stripers and all sizes represented from 20 inches up to 39 inches. I think he said was the biggest one that they caught and released. They had a couple keepers in the mix and just really phenomenal action. Uh, I've seen some other evidence on social media of um, many different people doing well finding schools of mixed sizes of bass around Newport and Point Judith, um, you know, and all sizes represented. Again, 20 inch fish up to 40 inch fish, and they're all mixing together, which is somewhat unusual. Um, but that kind of makes me think if you're out in the daytime and you're in the boat and you're, you know, you're chasing flocks of birds, if you get on a, a bite that's all small fish, move on to the next flock because there are good numbers of better sized fish around and uh, you know it might behoove you to be mobile rather than just putting a bunch of small ones in the boat. Uh, bluefish wise there have been some big bluefish off of Newport. Um, it's been very sporadic but they are there since seen some really nice fish chasing some bigger baits out there. Um, but the place if you want to find some bigger bass I kind of get out of order there but if you the best place to find bigger bass in Rhode Island right now is Watch Hill to Napa Tree and then crossing over the line to Fishers. There's, there's good numbers of nice sized bass there. It's mostly a night game, guys three way in eels, guys throwing big soft plastics like GT eels and stuff like that. Um, they're, they're finding some nice fish, you know, in that 20 to 30 something pound range. Uh, you do need to be careful though, there are some sharks in the mix out there. Um, so, uh, you know, I've seen, seen a couple photos online the last few days. Guys, I know that fish that area. Uh, holding up a half a striper so just uh you know keep your feet out of the water and um sea bass fishing has been really good basically from like newport heading straight out to the windmills and then heading all around uh block island sea bass has been really good i haven't heard a lot of fluke news this week i know that they're still out there obviously but um it seems to be slowing down a little bit also maybe a uh uh, you know, a side effect of all this churned up water. There might not be as many guys out there willing to do a drift for fluke. But um, fluke news has been on the on the slow side this week. But sea bass fishing has been very good. And then, as I mentioned in the uh, in the intro, 
we've seen a lot of Spanish mackerel in, in Rhode Island this week. And it's not like that's any kind of crazy thing. It's not like it never happens, but they're there. And um, I've seen guys getting them from the West Wall. I've seen guys getting them uh, from the breachways. Seen a couple boat guys getting them from like Watch Hill area and uh, areas south of there. So, you know, there's good numbers of Spanish mackerel around and they're no different than any other hardtail species. You can get them on epoxy jigs and you can get them on uh, alby snacks and all that stuff. And it's, you know, the, the fishing style is very similar. Um, and one of the best things about them, if you're a fish eater, they're great on the table. And that's the story that I got for you guys in Rhode Island this week. But first, we're going to throw it over to Mike from Watch Hill Outfitters. Take it away, Mike. We've got a lot of fishing going on. All of a sudden, there's albies everywhere. Guys are catching them up and down the coastline. One of the lures that I really like to use is the small heavy. So the epoxy jig by Hoagie, pretty effective. Uh, the other thing that I like to use it on is pretty much everything on the bottom. So if you're not getting into albies, you don't see anything going on out there, just send it down to the bottom. You'd be surprised what you get. Some of the guys are even picking up some nice blackfish doing it. We also have a lot of big bass, uh, pretty much on the reef and all the way down. Some of the guys were out last night uh, doing a little nighttime fishing and they were getting housed by some big sharks coming in, just chomping at their bass. That's a slot now. Mm. Actually, he might be under slot. Up, yeah. yeah, he's under slot. That's Good a bummer. Job, boys. <laughs> right at the boat. We also have blackfish season just beginning. Some of the guys are getting out there starting it. Some small fish here, some small fish there, but there's definitely some big ones in the mix. Get out there, see what you can find. Tight lines, Mike Wade, Watch Hill Outfitters. Now before we head over into Connecticut, I'm going to toss it over to our ad sales manager, Dale Nicholson. He's going to give us a little update on what's going on with the Hook a Cure for Cancer tournament and the guys on the Blackhawk. Take it away, Dale. Howdy folks, Dale Nicholson from the Fisherman Magazine. I'm here with my good friends Greg, CJ, and Luke from the Blackhawk. We're here to support a very good charity today. There's 15 boats going out in Niana, Connecticut, New London, Connecticut, Groton, Connecticut, all for fishing for a cure for the cure of cancer. Uh, Greg's going to tell you a little bit about, and these guys are going to tell you a little bit about what's going on in the fishery. And I'll let them take it away. Well, first of all, we're raising money for uh, to cure rare diseases and breast cancer. That's the that that's correct. the purpose. Hopefully, we're going to uh, all the boats uh, working combined here. We're going to uh, we're going to raise some money for the cause. Okay, that's the purpose. It's we're a great a cause. We got a lot of people today. Everyone uh, paid to go out on the boat, and the total proceeds go to that on all the boats so hopefully we're gonna we're gonna seriously raise some money the on the, the fishing, on the fishing part, part are you gonna tell anyone i'm gonna tell them uh it's been oh nothing short of excellent oh as, look at that that's a quick to say yeah uh this anyways is what happens in niantic when you try to get under the bridge and you don't make it <laughs> the outriggers <laughs> take a beating but i don't know if you heard that folks but we're, yeah. we're watching it so now in regards to the fishing. The fishing has been nothing short of excellent. The porgies and sea bass, we are in the bonus season right now. 50 a 50 man. 50 porgies, 50 porgies. So now is the time to fill your freezer if you want them. It's open for the uh, foreseen future as far as 50. Uh, we're gonna catch them right up till December 31st. Okay. Sea bass yesterday was as good in. as it gets. As good as it yeah. gets. So yeah, right now, we got some trigger fish in there. Where's Luke, is he getting in? Got some triggers in there. It's hard, it's hard getting Jumbo in there. Jumbo sea you. bass. Yeah, you're so those shoulders. It's hard. To you're so big. <laughs> you know. But come on out. Yeah, we, we had a good trip yesterday. We both. You worked on the trip. Oh, you worked on the trip. Yeah, it was very, very good. It's very, very, very good. good big sea yeah. bass. All the porgies you wanted. Bunch of triggers. We had a bunch of triggers. Bunch of triggers. And, Obviously, uh, folks, this is a great crew. As you can see, they're a lot of fun. We do have a good time. They catch a ton of fish. Feel free to come down anytime. Make your reservations online when you want to go out with them. Again, this is fishing for a cure. Last year, if I'm correct, I think we we made 25 grand. We're gonna try and beat that wow. this year. Wow, that's so nice. it's, it's just a great thing. So thanks for okay, listening folks. to us. In Connecticut, the bass fishing hasn't really changed that much. The the hot zone is still the race and the backside of fishers. Um, some nice fish being taken in there. It's a night game for the most part. Guys throwing eels into the rocks or three-waying through the uh, uh, through the race. And um, you know, I was hearing about some good fish there. Hearing about some big bluefish still mixed in there. Uh, there's been some big bluefish 
out around the mouth of the Thames as well. Uh, but another area that's starting to see just more and more bass action is basically from like Harkness up to the Thames and even a little bit beyond that. Um, daytime guys are reporting finding lots of bass in that area, uh, just gorging themselves on peanuts. The guys are getting them on jumping minnows and uh, super strike poppers and uh, those hoagie charter grade walker dog things, dog walkers or whatever he calls them. And um, Alby snacks, things like that, um, sluggos. Really good bite in there. And it's the same class of cookie cutter fish that we're seeing everywhere. A lot of like, you know, 20 to 20 to 35 inch fish. And you've got a shot at getting a bigger one. A lot of the bigger ones are coming at night. Um, but that area has been very good for stripers. It's definitely a good spot to concentrate on if you're looking for bass. Um, another spot that's still good for bluefish is uh, outside the Housatonic River. Still some really nice fish there and then heading out toward middle ground. Uh, diamond jigging out there has been very, uh, very effective. Uh, sea bass wise, <clears throat> excuse me, the best area seems to be starting in Niantic, just basically making a beeline for Montauk. So you're going to do well in that deep water south of Niantic. Um, you, can, you can do well in different parts of the race. And any of those humps and bumps heading out to Montauk, and then of course Montauk itself has, is phenomenal for sea bass. It's just a structure city out there. And uh, it's also by far your best bet, best bet for fluke right now, and it's going to remain your best bet um, until the season closes. And... Um, and then, of course, we've got Spanish mackerel going off in Connecticut as well. And I've been hearing about a lot of Spanish mackerel being taken out in the Milford area and kind of even pushing back toward like Clinton. And then the other place that's always a good bet for Spanish mackerel is Millstone. And this year's no different. Uh, guys are doing very well in both of these places using a variety of methods, seeing a lot of these fish taken this year. And, um, you know, it's just it's really great to see that. And then, of course, the porgy bite has been fire all year in Connecticut, and it hasn't slowed down one bit. Um, a lot of bigger scuff being taken right now. Uh, the party boats are doing well. Uh, they're running all over the place. You know, they're, they've got spots in the sound where they're picking up good fish. They're heading out to Block Island to, to cash in on some big sea bass, along with some big hubcap scup. Uh, they're heading out to Montauk, but it seems like everywhere they drop a line, they're finding a lot of big ones. And, uh, you know, the fishery just seems to be very good right now. Uh, now, Max was MIA today, so I'm going to throw it over to, uh, we're going to just take a look at the results of the, uh, the Dreamboat contest right here. There are no changes to the top four leaders this week. Henry Piacentino remains in first. Michael Briggs is in second. Joseph Yam is in third. And former Dreamboat Grand Prize winner Garrett Weir is in fourth. This week's offshore entries continue with John Stavola's 11.9 pound Mahi Mahi weighed in at Rivers and Tackle on August 28th. We also had a 3.1 pound Sea Robin entry from Fred Lederman of Hampton Bays weighed in at East End Bait and Tackle. There's tons of time remaining in the Dreamboat Challenge as we enter into some of the best fishing of the year. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi species fishing competition with a chance to win a new Steigercraft center console powered by Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Subscribe now to the Fisherman Magazine to be part of the action. And we're going to stay in the tournament vein now, and we're going to take a look at what's going on in, this, in the Coastal Kayak Clash. This week in the Coastal Kayak Clash, weather definitely played a factor along with holiday planning. But we did get one fish in that really made a difference, and that was Bob Wagner's 26-inch Alby, which not only puts him in first place so far for Fish of the Month for September, but it also leapfrogs him over Justin Oser, gives him nine points, leading the tournament right now. Justin Oser in second place with eight points, Bob Stuber holding down third place with five. Don't forget that September's Fish of the Month is hardtails, so it could be an Alby or a Bonito. You get a $100 yakattack.com gift card if you win it, and there's still a long way to go. Good luck out there. Get on those kayaks, catch some fish. And that's the story of the week. You know, we've uh, that's those are the reports for this week. You know, like I said, things have shaken up a little bit because of the weather, but the fish is still very good. A um, lot of options out there for you guys, no matter where you're from. And um, if you're not a subscriber to the Fisherman, come over to the website www.thefisherman.com and check us out. It's a lot of free content on there. And if you subscribe, you're going to get reports from 
the entire north half of the uh, east coast. You're going to get stories that cover all species along that whole stretch. And um, you're going to get content that goes way back. You're going to just, you're going to be buried in, uh, in content about the fish that you love to catch the most. So come over and check us out. Um, if you're not interested in that, at least give us a subscribe here on YouTube. Hit that little bell thing down there so you get a uh, notification when we post something new. And give me a like, will you? We'll see you guys next week. It's Tigercraft Boats, built by people who fish our waters. Serious English choose Tigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.